Hey everybody, this is McNeil Entertainment here, and this is going to be the explanation for Chapter 4, Moving Past Abuse, of my uh, book, Searching for the One That Won't Come Back. If you hear noise in the background, it's just my parakeet, just uh, try to ignore it. Alright, alright. Okay, as we begin here, the first paragraph of the story, if you did uh, decide to watch chapter four um, two videos ago, you will understand the story. But now, if we go into paragraph one, I, I was trying to get on with my life, and that was a very traumatic experience full event that I've ever had in my life. Okay, that was the second. The first one, of course, was losing my dad. Um, third one was being in a in an accident. But yeah, I had to move past the abuse that my ex-wife uh, <laughs> really put on me. I was on probation until, I want to say June 22nd of 2016. And I needed to get a job so I could actually uh, pay for what I need, so I can actually get a better phone. I could, so I could basically be my own person. And along with groceries as well. And because I had to pay off uh, the court and my uh, lawyer at the time, I had to pay them off. But yeah, now we look into paragraph two. I actually was applying at many places in my in the town that I was living in, and. I was recommended to actually apply to uh, CalMart, which we all know what store that is in reality. I was recommended to go to, to apply there, which I did apply. Yes, I did work in the bakery department, and I was actually thrilled to actually have a job, especially in retail. And, true story, I, recently, true story, I was a really great baker with my, when my grandma was still alive. So, I pretty much know the ins and outs of the bakery, and how to bake. And, because after I did apply, a uh, group that's on Facebook. Not really sure if these guys are still around anymore. The group called True North 4x4 actually gave me a, a new bicycle. As the one bicycle that I had was eating up my, uh, was eating up the shoes. So every other week or or whatever, I had to get a new pair of shoes. But yeah, I did ride my bicycle to and from uh, CalMart. And from where I was... Okay. A lot of people have made fat jokes, but pretend this is where I used to live. And pretend this shoulder is Walmart. Picture yourself as a tiny, as something smaller than an ant. A, uh, a maggot, I think. Th to them, or to any very tiny insect, that's basically, uh, two and a half, three miles. I was living two and a half, three miles from Walmart from Cal Calmart and 
I needed a ride to get me to and from work. I did not have a license at the time. Not even insurance. I was already caught once with no license and no insurance, which obviously that's public record. And yeah, as we move on, yeah, I was searching for a vehicle. The conversation that I did have with my dad was actually very true. The interview, I used Jerry as a pseudo name for the person that conducted the interview over at Calmart. Pretty much all that was said was true. How do I remember those questions? They, they stuck with me. I, I don't know how else to uh, say it. So we're going to get past the interview section. And yes, I was actually, after the interview, I did ride home on that bike. I rode all the way home. It was a very steep grade because anyone knows, anyone that actually knows the apartment complex by this Calmart in my area will know how steep that hill is. And it is a very steep hill. Let's just say if you get to the hill, you have to pretty much get off the bike to walk all the way to the top of the hill. That's how steep it is. We're not talking about no hill that's like this. We're talking about a hill like this. Like where it's <laughs> that uphill. That uphill. And pretty much anyone that really knows me, I don't really like to prefer getting on camera. If it's if it has to show more than this, I don't feel comfortable doing it. Although you've seen it on quite a few of my uh, videos for my spicy food, but yeah, pretty much a person like me was going downhill. It was like like the wind was all up in my hair. Oh felt so good and be as as I was uh, yeah the next couple paragraphs so I'm gonna be summarizing my dad he did technically uh, meet me or asked to meet me over at the uh, Bullseye Retailers at the loading dock or right by the loading dock area so we and him could bond and so we could actually use the, uh, the internet there we did not have any Wi-Fi and yeah And the unemployment thing was actually very true. <sighs> but I did have orientation. Uh, that part about Calvert was true. <sighs> and... Yeah, that was all true. My dad, he, he didn't tell me uh, that, that big advice. That part was not true. I do have a strong work ethic. A very strong work ethic. And I'm willing to get it done regardless. I never told my dad that I will not let him down. <sighs> but I did let him down in death when I unfortunately had to sell the Ford Ranger that I was trying to uh, restore. But I was praying to God that he would try and get me in to keep me in the line of work and so I could actually work. Because I was leaving jobs left and right. I was either laid off, I would either quit, 
or I would get fired. It was roughly, uh, I didn't get my first vehicle, well, first vehicle that was in my name until October of 2016. So I was going back and forth to work on a bicycle and getting cab rides and whatnot. But yeah, the part of the story that is true would be okay it's a half true and half lie where it says a month after the training and getting the first couple of paychecks George had enough for a vehicle and he did not have a license in the first place half of that's true the part that isn't true was a month after the training and getting the first couple of paychecks that was not true I, like I said, I didn't get my first vehicle until October of 2016. <sighs> and... Yeah, I had to bike all my way from CalMart to my bank. And the bank was further away than the house due to where it was. Yeah, it was actually a mile from the house I was at. And it's true that I did have heat exhaustion, heat exhaustion uh, during the pedaling of home because I didn't take a break from the Fells Wargo Bank. And I... I did have heat exhaustion. I did pass out. And it's true that my dad did come running out from the backyard after hanging clothes to uh, dry because our dryer did not work at the time. The drying component of the washer, I really don't know what it's really called, but it's the drying portion of the washer that broke. It was just heating clothes. It wasn't drying them. But back to the story, though, is I did collapse. My dad went to come check on me. <sighs> I remember him saying, remember, replace George with my name. George? George, are you all right? You okay? I remember him asking me that. And then I asked my old man, I'm okay, but what happened? I don't remember a thing. Because, honestly, I did not even knew that I fell. But my dad saw that I fell. And well, he heard me fall, and then he saw me. And... <sighs> uh, this event took place in September. And, well, the very early September. Can't remember if it was the first 10 days of the month or the first uh, uh, three days after the 10th of September. But, back to the story. That, that's what happened. I, my dad did give me a cold beer when I was 20. And I was only a couple months away from being uh, 21, so in my eyes, I didn't really see if it mattered or not. And mostly because I did listen to my dad. It sounded great at the time. I was drunk after one beer. I... To, to this day, I have no memory. I have no memory of what the beer was actually called. But yeah, after about half an hour, I was feeling all good and whatnot. 
I did take a cold shower, that was true. I did play video games. I didn't really have a... for a bed. I didn't have the traditional mattress. My bed was actually a couch. Because my dogs at the time, they tore up my bed. When I mean tore up my bed, I meant like they ate my mattress. So I was sleeping on a couch. And... Yeah, oh. Yeah. Never mind, I was going to say something, but I completely forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, scrolling down and down. The next part of the story that's... That's not true... Was when I drank... Uh, six... When, when I... The part when I was 16... That was not true. I did not, uh, drink those many cans. I didn't even... Well, I only drank one of them. I did not know it was alcohol. I didn't even know it was a beer. All I thought... It said strawberry. I did not know what a hard seltzer was. I... Truthfully, I didn't. I just thought a hard seltzer meant another way for carbonated water. That's what I truthfully thought back when I was 16. It was true that they were very tiny cans. You seen the size of uh, those miniature soda cans? Can't remember the uh, actual amount, but they're but they're like yay big by uh, by this wide, yay yay big by yeah, those small cans and. It will come back to uh, chapter 5, though, because there is more to that story than you think. <laughs> I did get to my bedroom. Um, yeah, I did think of buying a vehicle to get to and from work. And of course, I truthfully did not know how to pump my own gas until I was 21. That's really sad. Okay, yeah, it's been my dad that was mostly, uh, was pumping the gas for me. Which I never really learned how to pump gas until then. I did have about 500 bucks at the time to get a vehicle. And the pickup truck that I, that I actually bought that day. But to like a week or two in advance was a 92 Chevy Silverado, a 1500 uh, with a V6 engine, uh, four-wheel drive. It, it was a stick shift. <laughs> I got, uh, I did not know how to drive stick until after I bought that truck. But before the truck, I was actually going to be looking at a Toyota Camry. I believe it was a 99 Toyota Camry. Uh, don't quote me on it. I can't really remember. It's been that long ago. Remember, this was 2016 we're talking about. This was a long time ago. But yeah, it was a lemon, and it did technically need fixing every other day or every week. This vehicle needed a lot of work. Well, that truck. And I've got, I learned a lot from doing that truck, though, and... My dad did tell me not to take the main roads. He always took me to take the back roads back when I did not have a license. Which I obeyed by taking the back roads to and from work pretty much every day until I got my license. I was still driving even after getting caught twice with no license and no insurance. And we're going to be skipping quite a bit because it's pretty much the uh, same thing that I was just talking about. 
the truck that I was thinking on trading was for a uh, Let's just say 96 Dodge Dakota. Because I don't remember what your Dodge Dakota was back when they still made them uh, box body instead of rounded. But yeah, this location was about 45 minutes away from where I was. And on the way home, I did get stopped by the cop in the parking lot of Bullseye Retailers. Yeah, the cop was pissed. I did try to beg my dad to actually get me back out on the road. But he's like, no, I'm not having you go to jail. And I'm like, all right. Pretty much everything that the cop told me and I told the cop, pretty much that's all true in the story. They uh, gratefully did not impound my vehicle. They didn't even believe that the owner of that truck no longer lives in the uh, the town that supposedly we got the truck in. He did not believe that. I did receive a ticket in the mail and had to go to court. The, the judge, he truthfully did, uh, the judge did truthfully make a deal with me saying, if I can get my license within six months, that he would pretty much drop the charges and have those charges out my record. And I got a deal. This happened in November of 2016. And basically, I got my license in May of 2017. So, yeah, that's about six months. So... Yeah, if you were to go view my, my background check and my driving record, you're only going to see <laughs> no license, no insurance charge from 2015. Which means those are long gone. But don't do background check on me because that would be very, very creepy. Plus, don't want to give up <laughs> my uh, full name. And you don't need to know where I live. But I did go on quite a few dates with a couple women back during the time I still had that truck. I didn't uh, get my first actual car, my first actual sedan, until I believe it was April of 2017. But back when I had that truck, it was either December or January when I had these dates. And the three dates that I had, they didn't go over so well. They pretty much made me feel terrible. One of them, whom I still remember the name, especially the name of the one restaurant they used to be in uh, the next town over. But I'm not going to be that petty. But this uh, woman that I was on the date with, she showed up 25 minutes late. She was only there for five minutes. Five minutes there only. She kept looking at her phone. And then she says, oh, I'm sorry, I gotta get home. My kid is sick. And in the back of my head, I'm like, Bull crap. Bull crap. Because if her kid was truthfully sick, then why show up on the date in the first place? She left me with the bill. The entire full amount. 45 bucks. And with what I was making back then, that was a <laughs> that pretty much wiped away a certain percentage, and I did go into a slum of depression though, and as we're coming to the end of this uh, end of this chapter, I kept thinking it was a great date, but they didn't 
see that it was a great date anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to find the person for me. And I'm still trying to better myself. <sighs> but God led me to the right person after my dad died. And I believe I've... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Chapter 5 is going to include quite a bit. Including my divorce from my ex-wife. Which I'm still grateful for and thankful for. But yeah, if you like this, don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my content. This is McNeil Entertainment, signing off.